Hi, good afternoon. Uh, today we're with Gary Swartz, who's in near New York, and Gary's uh, had a long, long-term experience in uh, customer feedback, customer research. So, good morning, Gary. Good morning, Ray. It's uh, good to see you. Yes, and thanks so, for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. So, we were speaking earlier about uh, research and feedback. Maybe if you could give a little bit of your background, and then touch a little bit on what you see is the difference between research and feedback in the customer space. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to, Ray. By way of background, um, I've been on the vendor side of research and uh, feedback for about the past nine years, uh, most recently with Confirmit, a uh, leading vendor of feedback management software. And our client bases uh, were generally split between market research agencies who use the product to conduct market research on behalf of their clients and global enterprises who tend to use the product to capture customer feedback and make that actionable within their business. And it's interesting you asked about the difference between research and feedback. Um, in my view, there, there are some fundamental differences between the two that have some profound implications in how you deploy um, these and use these as techniques for, uh, to add value to the business. Research tends to be done when the company wants to know the answer to a question. And so that has some implications. The company needs to know that answer within a finite amount of time. So they will say, let's conduct a survey. Who should we invite to join that survey? And because of cost and because of time implications, typically a company will invite a sample of representative people who are representative of their broad customer base or of whatever segment they're looking to target. And they'll field that survey over the course of a month, try to collect all the data they need in order to have a good sense of the reliability of, of the data. Um, another thing about research is that research is anonymous. So we're not allowed to recontact those people in order to sell them products or services in order to ensure the integrity of the responses and of the research that's collected. Feedback, on the other hand, is, is very different because rather than the company needing to know what's happening in a certain period of time, feedback is collected on the customer's time frame, not on the company's time frame. So I've had an interaction with your business and the business wants to find out how was that? How did we do? How could we do better? Um, by the nature of that, that means you want to be capturing feedback on an event-driven basis, not scheduled as when you collect research. So when the customer has an interaction, you want to capture feedback when that interaction is fresh in that person's mind. That implies that research is, uh, the feedback excuse me, is done continuously as opposed to research that might be fielded over a short period of time. Also, feedback is the opposite of anonymous. If I've asked you for feedback and I want to know how your experience was, I need to be able to recontact you if you tell me that uh, you had a really bad experience with my business. I want to be able to contact you and fix that problem. So feedback is, is personalized rather than anonymous. It's fielded continuously rather than over a fixed period of time. And because you want to capture as many customer interactions as you can, you're really looking ideally at a census, you know, getting everybody's feedback as opposed to the research where we're capturing a small sample and extrapolating that across a wider customer base. So what are the trends that you see in the market at the moment? Um, Obviously, social media must be having an impact on the, the market research and, and feedback industries. Um, how do you see that at the moment? Social media is an interesting one, um, and, and it's caused a great deal. I don't know if concern is the right word. It's gotten a great deal of attention, both in the market research and the feedback management space and in the CRM space. And I think while a lot of companies, I think right now, there's a lot of fear attached to social media, and that's because companies are very concerned about brand reputation and about people who may be a one-off having some bad experiences, but being very loud in the social media world, making an impact on the company's reputation. There's also interest in using the data that could be collected in social media. So what are people saying about us on Twitter? What are people saying about us on Facebook and other social media channels? to try to understand that and see how that impacts the business, business processes. What I think companies are doing though is taking a measured view of that. 
because there's a very clear danger that if it's they don't quantify what they're hearing in the social media world, they run the risk of having a very small group of people creating a disproportionate impact on the business or appearing to have a disproportionate impact on what the customer, the broad customer base is thinking. So I think what companies are doing is using social media as a way to identify areas of concern, but there's still a need to use more structured feedback in order to quantify that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just one of the tools in the, in the toolbox. Um, so business process, where does customer experience fit into your thinking? Well, feedback to me is about the measurement of the customer experience. So it's one piece of the broader customer experience landscape. And clearly companies are very, um, very aware, I think, much more aware today than five or 10 years ago of how the customer experience affects the things that are key to the business, which is how do we retain customers? How do we get more business out of our customers? And how do we acquire new customers? So there's, there's a lot of synergy in thinking around creating a good customer experience is good not only for the customers, but good for the business. And so I think companies were starting to see a lot more organizational impact where companies are creating a chief customer officer or somebody who's responsible for overseeing the customer experience. The challenge, of course, is whether that's account what they're accountable for because they're not necessarily part of the marketing and sales organization, so they're not accountable for revenue, but they're, in effect, accountable for overseeing how the company broadly creates good experiences for, for its customers across the business. So I think we're seeing more trends in companies trying to figure out organizationally where does this sit and where can it have the best impact on the business. I don't think that's, I think there's going to be a few more years of that shaking out before we really see some real broad trends in, in that area. But there, right now the trend I see is more companies putting an emphasis on thinking about it. Yeah, great. Well, as you know, the... the um we're hoping that the, the language of the clientele will will play a part in that. Uh, the chief customer officer needs some people to help. Um, and I think, as we discussed earlier, the, I think the accountability probably still needs to sit with the existing sales and marketing production um, admin silos. But the, the, the whole idea of the customer and the customer work needs to be coordinated. So um, we'll watch with interest. Uh, Gary, thanks very much for your time today. That's been absolutely great. Uh, and pleasure. You have a, you you have a good evening. We'll speak again soon. All right, you too. Thank, Thank you. Care.